impact on the global level. For those of you who've never heard of Norman Cousins, he was twice president of CGS under our former name of the World Federalist Association, both in the 1950s and again from 1976 to 1990. He was a journalist, author, professor, and peace advocate whose writings and TV appearances did much to promote our movement to a worldwide audience. Some of the previous recipients of this award have been the Deputy Secretary of State, Strobe Talbot, the 19-year anchor of the CBS Evening News, Walter Cronkite, who is frequently referred to as the most trusted man in America, and most recently, just a few years ago, the award went to Benjamin Ferenz, who is the chief prosecutor at one of the Nuremberg Nazi war crimes trials and a pioneer in international law, who this year is celebrating his 100th birthday. So um, it just shows you that being involved in this movement um, definitely adds to your longevity. So for this year, we are delighted to honor Bill Pace. Bill has recently retired from over 20 years as the executive director of the World Federalist Movement Institute for Global Policy. He was the founding convener of the Coalition for the International Criminal Court and co-founder of the International Coalition for the Responsibility to Protect. Bill has been engaged in international justice, the rule of law, environmental law, and human rights for four decades. In addition to serving as the executive director of the World Federalist Movement, Bill has also served as the Secretary General of the Hague Appeal for Peace, the director of the Center for the Development of International Law, the director of section relations of the Concerts for Human Rights Foundations at Amnesty International, among other roles. Bill is the recipient of the William J. Butler Human Rights Medal from the Urban Morgan Institute for Human Rights, and he was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize for his work on the International Criminal Court. It gives me great pleasure to present this award, which says, and let me hold it up here. Well, I'll read it first, then hold it up. In appreciation for a life dedicated to justice, the rule of law, and world federation, Citizens for Global Solutions hereby presents to William R. Pace, the Norman Cousins Global Governance Award, November 19th, 2020. And here is the award. Um, Bill is with us and he will say a few words. Well, thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me all right? Yep. Very good. Well, I apologize for being late. I had marked this down for 10 days from the 28th and 29th. So I apologize for not being there yesterday and, and today until now. Of course, I am enormously honored by uh, this award and the, and the thought uh, behind it and the history uh, behind it. Uh, I remember well uh, in my first days working at the national level with uh, the World Federalists uh, meeting Norman Cousins uh, in Philadelphia and uh, and having wonderful discussions with him and inspired by uh, his uh, tremendous uh, leadership. Um, and so it is a, a great honor to have an award in, in, in his name. Um, I joined the World Federalist Movement uh, in I think 1970 or 1971 when I was uh, trying to find a proper response to not only the war in Vietnam, but to the issue of, of war and peace. And I believe that, uh, that the, the World Federalist Association and the Citizens for Global uh, Solutions and the uh, previous uh, entities of the world federalist in the United States have been a very important and, and progressive political voice and, and force for these last 70 plus years. Um, I was honored as uh, Bob mentioned that in 
1989 initially, and then again in 1994, uh, the international movement asked me to become their general secretary or secretary general. Uh, initially, I was not able to do it, but I did in 1974 agree and served until uh, last uh, July and, and 25 years in, in 2019. Um, it has been uh, one of the greatest, uh, again, honors and, and uh, experiences of my life to uh, take a job which I thought would have only last for two or three years. And uh, uh, when I left after 25 years, I felt like there was 25 more years of work that still needed to be done. Um, historically, I think the World Federalists uh, at the national, regional, and international levels have been an indispensable advocate for world peace through uh, the rule of law, uh, raising fundamental reforms of the United Nations and the UN Charter, at, while at the same time uh, strongly supporting the U United Nations and uh, the developments of progressive cooperative international organization. Um, the World Federalists have been in many ways, whether it was with uh, direct entities that we were working on or uh, uh, partner entities like the Center for UN Reform, like Nancy and Joe Schwartzberg Institute most recently. Uh, we have been advocates for very important reforms of the United Nations legal order and system uh, of the Security Council and the veto of the General Assembly, of uh, the development of the European Union, which was led by uh, a uh, post-World War II European Federalists. Um, I've just been reading for the last uh, month of, or so of this uh, COVID disaster, uh, Ron Chernow's book on Hamilton. And I highly recommend anyone who hasn't read it and has the time to pick it up. It is an extraordinarily eloquent uh, history of the development of the concept of federalism uh, by the founders of the United States uh, Constitution um, and the uh, first administrations of, of uh, the new United States government that succeeded the Articles of Confederation. And of course, uh, one cannot, could not but be impressed by how much Divisiveness, anger, and bitterness also existed in the period between uh, the 1790s and the first decade or in the second decade of uh, the 19th century and 1800s. Um, but it it is a, it was an example of in uh, in this book of that the most high-minded founders realized the genius of the federalism in the late 18th century, just as many high-minded uh, leaders like Norman Cousins in the 20th and 21st century continue to recognize uh, the importance. So we call things by different names all the time uh, and uh, different, in different terms, but uh, the concept of applying the principles of federalism that uh, brought the, the United States together 200 and 40 some years ago are as relevant today for the development of regional international government and global international governance as they uh, were uh, 240 years ago. Uh, amongst the, uh, I think the most important accomplishments that we, you could go on for half an hour, an hour or two on the different things that World Federalists from the United States and International have contributed, but obviously the uh, ideas of a UN parliamentary assembly, the ideas of global environmental protection and global environmental governance, whether from the law of the sea to climate change. Uh, of course, we've mentioned the International uh, Criminal Court um, uh, 
and the Rome Statute. And today, I think you will see in the news decisions by the government of Australia to prosecute uh, soldiers who committed crimes against humanity and war crimes. And they would never have been, I believe, brought to justice if, that, if Australia wasn't a member of the Treaty on the International Criminal Court, that they would rather do it at in their national legal system rather than uh, have the International World Court uh, deal with that. Um, but of course, uh, our, uh, uh, our goal since the beginning was how do we contain and outlaw war as best as possible. And whether that's through disarmament or through uh, strengthening uh, the uh, nonviolent uh, uh, guarantees for safety and security and uh, prosperous livelihoods for peoples all over the world. Um, again, I think the World Federalists have been uh, tremendously uh, in the lead intellectually and with certain projects like UNPA, like the Coalition for the International Criminal Court, we've also been amongst the leading uh, organizations in the trenches developing the new laws. Um, I was asked also perhaps to comment on the current crises that we're facing because I think not only federalism, but the whole concept of representative democratic constitutional government is under greater threat in the United States today than at any time in my lifetime. And I think maybe in any time uh, in, in the last 240 years. So uh, it, this, this has been an enormously depressive uh, last few years, I think for uh, progressive governance for the United States was drawing from major international institutions rather than trying to improve and strengthen them. Um, and we are literally on the cusp. Uh, if this had been three weeks ago, I'm, I'm sure I would be even more catatonic than I, I may sound uh, tonight. But I hope and pray that the, uh, I think almost 80 million people that voted for a change of uh, presidency and administrations uh, in the United States on November 3, that this is a, a sign that is not only uh, hopeful in, in this country, but is a sign that is being uh, sending hope all throughout the world. And, uh, but I, my, Lesson, one of the lessons from the uh, work that I did as the International Secretary General for WFM was that our, I think the greatest hopes are no longer the big powers, but the coalitions of the small and middle power democracies that uh, constitute over a hundred countries now of the 200 countries in the world. And almost every major uh, advancement, not all, but almost every major advancement in the last uh, 30 years has come from the leadership of uh, European unions, of uh, uh, democracies from the North and the South, the East and the West working together to try and advance uh, cooperation uh, in the international legal order. And the only way that we will see uh, uh, addressing disarmament and addressing uh, climate change uh, and the global economic uh, dangers and the global medical dangers that will rise are based upon the kind of intense cooperation and rules-based, uh, law-based uh, cooperation between governments. And I, I think I still believe that big powers like the United States uh, can play an indispensable role in these coalitions. But these coalitions, I think, are our hope. And as we've seen with countries like uh, New Zealand, I think is one of the most important examples these days that, that the, the strength of 
the democratic principles uh, in and the federalist principles in these countries is uh, uh, a great hope for us going forward. Um, in terms of advice for uh, co uh, for the citizens for global solutions, I I think we just need to hold on and and hope and pray that this new generation uh, that have been so impressive to me in the last 25 years, uh, uh, the millennials, the, those, those who are in their 20s and 30s now that I think uh, were enormously responsible for a lot of the progressive movements that we've seen in the United States in the last uh, 10 or 15 years, which uh, haven't been the dominant political forces, but I think they offer uh, to the future what I think the post World War II generation offered uh, to world peace uh, in, in the 50s, 60s, 70s uh, in, the United, in, in the world. So I think I've gone on uh, probably longer than I was uh, wanted to, to go on, but uh, I'm deeply honored by this. I think we are an indispensable international peace organization in this world and are, as we were when I joined in 1970, we're more needed today than we were at any other time. So thank you very much. Bill, thank you so much, Bill. And I want to invite everybody to go off mute so we don't have to do a silent applause. So if folks want to <laughs> join me in that. Yay. Hey, Bill. Yay. Great. Bill, I, I, I wanted to, oh, go ahead. I wanted to just say at the end of our meeting, which ends um, in a little bit, we're going to have a breakout room with Bill Pace in it if he's willing to, if he's able to stay. So anyone who wants to go into a small breakout room to talk with Bill in a smaller group would be, is welcome to do that if Bill's able to stay. I'll, I'll do my best. Uh, I have not been well the last day or so, so I may not last very long, but I'll be happy to. Oh, okay, just great. Yes, Bill, I think you were just volunteered <laughs> for that. Okay, so I, I want to thank Bill um, for a lifetime of dedicated service. And just to say we're all indebted to you for providing much of the foundation for the work that we're all doing today. So thank you very much. And I want to let the whole group know that we're delighted that Bill has accepted our invitation to join our National Advisory Council. So we look forward, yes, we look forward to our continued work with Bill. So at this point, if folks can put themselves back on mute and take a deep breath and a stretch, this is not a break. We're moving on to our next segment. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Larry David. Larry is a former